this young lady and her friend are known for filming content of themselves, you know, having sexual relations with adult men and stuff, but usually like really high numbers of them. So their whole thing is like to, you know, rent out a house somewhere, an Airbnb, whatever it may be, and have all these guys roll in and, you know, do the deed one after the other. And they film it. Sometimes they'll film it and they'll record the guy talking to them and they'll just blur out their faces or they'll mask their voices or what they'll do that's really kind of gnarly where they'll like have this video clip of them like, you know, talking about what they're going to do. We're here. We're about to go through these guys. Da, 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 da. And they'll have the camera pan through the, the corridor, the hallway where all the guys are waiting to get into the next room. And we just see all of these feet, all of these pairs of shoes just standing in the hallway. Like, you know, let's say easily more than 10 people. And I think, oddly enough, now that I'm thinking about it, and I'm talking about it now, I think the first time I saw this girl's content, I'm not going to lie, it might have been around the pandemic. I think this girl has been at it, or somebody of that kind of ilk, maybe since the pandemic. Because I remember seeing posts of hers where she'd be going to, like, student dorms. Like, guys were getting, like, their student loan, and they were blowing it, no pun intended, on this young lady and her, you know... Um, sexual services and it's really jarring to see in real life no it's really jarring to see it displayed like that and i'm seeing a lot of people on social media would also do the same thing but the funny thing about it is that i think i'm quite self-aware and honest with the things that jar me i'm not afraid to like say it right um obviously i'm you know i'm very open-minded with a lot of things but there's certain things you look at and you think wow and you start to like try and process like how that work you know the practicalities of it but it's been interesting to see on social a bunch of people who, you know, proclaim to be progressive, who proclaim to be open-minded, who proclaim to be super, you know, duper pro-sex work when they're confronted with what sex work actually is. Not the cute stuff that people do online, showing feet, a little bit of shoulder and elbow, a little bit of nipple pop, you know, maybe peeking through, peekaboo style and some lingerie, right? Maybe some twerking videos. No, 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 no. Or maybe you having flipping, you know, sexual relations with your husband or boyfriend and pretending it's some other dude in a mask. No. Real, real, real sex work is what this girl's doing. She's offering up her body to like hundreds, if not thousands of men on a daily, if not weekly basis, all for the love of the game, all for the content and all for the money. And it's been gnarly. It's been so funny to see people online who say they're pro sex work, get very uncomfortable with this girl's content because it's really raw. No pun intended. It's very raw. It's very what it is. And the really odd thing about it for me too, she doesn't look like a slaw. She does not look like, you know, as black youngster would say, a whore. Like, on the face of it, you wouldn't, she doesn't scream whore. Maybe she might, you know, she might look at the type of girl that, you know, you could probably get a little bit of, uh, you could probably swap saliva with at the staff party on a Christmas, right? You know those Christmas staff parties? Maybe she looks like that type of type. But you would never think she's somebody that is like, you know, um, booking apartments and like smashing a dude, you know, a hundred men in there. And trying to set records and stuff. You would never bet that. So it's been really gnarly to see people in real life. Actually or in social media. Trying to process this. And you know trying to wrangle in their head. Whether or not they're pro it or against it. Uh, me personally I say you know. Let people do what they want to do. I'm sure they've got arrangements to sort out. What needs to be sorted out. If everybody gets into. If everybody's into it leaves happy. Then you know I'm all for it. I'm championing it. But I'm just interested to see how it's been observed by others and also how she's documenting it because the documentation that she's been putting together has been pretty gnarly um i'm gonna play you a clip actually cut to the shade borough they've got a clip on here about her and then we can continue on but this is kind of to give you an idea on what this particular young girl is about because i swear to god like i again i i keep seeing it on my profile from time to time but just the other day i, I actually watched it for watched it for, for sake and i was like raw not only is there one of these, there's two of these girls to in doing this type of content and they're doing like, you know, they're doing it like for real, for real. Like they're putting themselves out there, out there. So this is one of the posts, right? Um, this is cut to the shade, bro. Big up the shade, bro. Ran through by 101 men. And hold on, hold on. Let's play, that, let's play that one more time. Let's play that one more time. Oh, this girl's a legend. Ran through by 101 men and my eyes are still recovering from all the bodily fluids that went in them <laughs> ran through by 101 men 
and my eyes are still recovering from all the bodily fluids that went in them. I'm not gonna lie, when this video started, I thought she was gonna say my eyes are still recovering from how long I had to stay up getting ran through by 100 men, right? Like the process of getting run through, it takes a long time, I'm tired. I wasn't expecting her to say that. I wasn't expecting her to say, <laughs> I wasn't expecting her to say my eyes are red and sore, not because I've been, st I've been up for like seven hours and I'm tired, no. They're red and sore because of bodily fluids that have been covered all over them. Again, apologies for you if you're listening to this via the audio side of the pod and you're hearing this disgusting stuff. Please fast forward later on. If you're listening to me via the live stream and this is really making you gag, I apologize profusely. But this is fascinating to me. Absolutely fascinating. Fascinating, fascinating that someone would document this type of stuff and put it on the internet for everyone else's pleasure and just have, I would say zero shame about it, but just have zero like hesitancy the shame isn't a good word to say it's more like there's a lack of hesitancy like it's just all out there apart from the faces and the names of the people it's just like wow okay fair play next slide i went viral for letting 23 guys run a train on me with my friend bonnie now that video is actually out now so if you want to check that out you know where to go but if you want to be a part of the next one i'm actually doing 100 guys in one day so head on over to my Twitter to find out how to apply. I yeah, I'd, I'd love, that's the part that I'd love to know. What happens with the applicant? Like, so what's going on? What's she, where, because I'm assuming this is like a money play at the end, right? I'm assuming you've, you've probably got OnlyFans. So there's a money play at the end, for sure. There's a money play. You're trying to get your, your, your OnlyFans subscribers up. And, you know, subscription services are probably the best way to kind of lock in money if you're this type of person yes you could probably you know get a lot of money from being an escort but I'd imagine you're probably going to earn a lot more and you're probably going to be able to have that money be stable if you just have a subscription service so i'm assuming most likely the guys who sign up to be one of the hundred maybe a part of what you sign up to is that you relinquish the right to not be included in the video footage so they might not have your face on shit but or your voice but you have to be open to be recorded and then this young lady will let you smash her and then she'll put that footage up on the pay behind the paywall so guys who like to watch gangbang kind of footage can watch it i'm assuming that's what the deal is but like how much money would make it worthwhile though because it's not like you can't see gangbang footage on like regular porn sites right it's not like this like you know that out of the norm and yeah she's a you know she's a pretty girl but she's just just a regular girl right it's not like because it'd be it'd be different if she was asian it'd be different if she was black if she was a male for something then you could go for that kind of angle but just like a regular white girl you can see plenty of regular skinny white girls getting their back blown out by like 100 plus people on pornhub for free or even on reddit you know or even on twitter if you wanted if you're into that sort of stuff you can you know it's never been for me personally i always get it's a little bit um I always thought it was a little bit violent, you know? <laughs> it's a little bit violent. And I never really understood the idea that guys... I never really understood the the allure guys have, like, with smashing somebody together. Like, I never understood that sort of thing. Like, you know, I never really got that. And, I, and you know, and I would never want another guy to be in a room while I have my happy face on, you know? You know, that kind of thought, like, having to look your boy in the eye while you got your happy face on. And you're trying not to like pant. <laughs> and you're trying not to moan. You have to kind of look at your boy dead in the eye and just pretend like this is. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. But that is one thing. I'm assuming they will have to wear protection. Number one. I'm assuming. I'm assuming they will have to wear protection. That should be the basis, hopefully. If not, then Jesus Christ. But if they don't, then I'm assuming they have to take tests. But then that will maybe delay how long it is for her to do the thing. Um. The renting of apartments, again, I'm not too sure. Is Are they all Airbnbs? Are they just like, how she finding these places? Are the, are, the, are the landlords upset when they find out their, you know, their habitations have been debased by 100 plus people's um, bodily fluids? Um, the God bless the cleaning team. They have to come after this, right? God bless the cleaning team. They have to come after. Like, there's something as well that you realize. I remember what, that's the first thing you realize when you go to like, um, when you go to Bergheim, right? When you go to Bergheim, as, as great as it is, as amazing as it is, a little detail, if you're not used to going to gay clubs, a little detail, if you're not used to going to queer gay clubs, usually it stinks. Usually. 
because it's a bunch of dudes in it but then the other side of it is that the dark rooms and the toilets turn into you know turns into like sex play places so when you go in there to piss the stench you will hear or you will feel you know in your nostrils it's probably a stench that you've never ever felt if you haven't been to those type of clubs so i can only imagine i can only imagine what the stench would be in a room where a hundred guys have ran through a girl and they've all kind of been you know splooge all over the place panting sweating all that malarkey i can only imagine what that must feel like I, you know for the cleaners that's the type of cleaner that deserves a tip and some right or maybe you have your own cleaning services right you have your own team who know what to expect because if you just put this on some like you know on some woman like who has no idea she thinks she's coming to clean up a fucking a party airbnb or something right over the weekend and she walks in and it's like oh my god you know i mean merda you know what i mean Son, you know what I mean? Jesus Christos, <laughs> Dios mio. You know what I mean? Like, what the hell? Like, she walks in like I'm unaware of what's going on. Like, bless that, bless that cleaner when coming in and stuff. But yeah, I just, I don't know, man. I saw this thing on show Street and it really blew my mind. I think the girl that I saw was the one here on the left hand side. I don't know who her name, what her name is. What's that? Uh, Bonnie, I'm assuming. So one's called Bonnie, one's called Lillian. And I saw one of their content online when they did a deep dive and was like, oh shit, this is a thing. And there's, and there's, I even saw a clip where one of them is interviewing the guys, like interviewing, like, you know, personal interview. How was it? Blah, blah, blah. Like wild shit we're in, man. We're living in a wild world. This sort of stuff used to happen, like, you know, behind like really heavy curtains in dark places in very, you know, um, nondescript, non, you know, non easy to find places. But now, this sort of stuff is like front and center on the internet and people can see it everywhere. So God bless everyone to get involved. Hopefully you all take care of yourselves. That's all you can kind of ask for, but it's pretty gnarly to see this stuff on the internet. It's pretty freaking gnarly. And I can't wait for this girl to make the rounds on the podcast circuit because I'm curious to find out like, you know, some of the particularities that go into making this whole operation work and how much money's being made, all this malarkey. You know what I mean? I'm curious because... If this girl's making five grand, you know, that's not enough, man. That 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 surely can't be enough. You think you'd think so. Because you could probably just get into porn and make way more than that. So I don't know. Or maybe she just enjoys it. Maybe she's just one of the people that just enjoys it. That could be also a factor. But I'm I'm curious to learn more about her. But I'm assuming after this has gone viral, she's probably gonna do the circuit, some of the podcasts and stuff, especially in the UK, and we'll get to find out more about her. I wish she was American. Because I think if she was American, we'd get way more information. I think the UK, we're definitely way more puritanical. And we're definitely a little bit more timid. Um, she's probably not going to get as much fame from it as she probably thinks. I think she's probably going to get a lot of hate, especially from girls in this country, which is weird enough. I think in the US, um, you know, Amer my American brothers and sisters, you guys celebrate debauchery, you know, and hedonism a lot better than we do. And I think you would have indulged her. She probably would have ended up being a hook to her. But I think over here in the UK, like, let's look at the comments here. Look at the comments on the shade bar. I remember those days when we used to have stam when we used to have shame. Please sing in tune with Ghetto Story by Baby Sham for reference. Um, someone said, God forbid. I don't even I don't even see a hundred people in a week, a person says here. A hundred men is wild, but also being one of those hundred men is also wild. No, yeah, I don't know. I think there's plenty of dudes out there that that's the thing that's weird, isn't it? I think there's plenty there's probably plenty of dudes that don't mind being one of 100, but there's not a lot of girls that want to be one of 100. When the reality is, the numbers are way big, way higher than 100, you know? That's a, that's probably the first lie we all tell when we get into relationships. When we get into a relationship with somebody, the first lie we all probably tell, 99% of us, I, I imagine, is the amount of people we slept with. I think so. No one really wants to say the real number because if, it, if it's a real number, it makes you look like you don't get girls. And if it's the real number, the other side, it makes you look like a man whore. So you don't want to say it. So you're like, you know, you choose someone in the middle. I don't know, you go like 19, you know? <laughs> you keep it nice, you know, 19, just to keep it like, <laughs> or whatever. But you don't ever say the real, real number. But the reality is the real number is horrendous. And I've always thought anyway, in general, from my limited experience of like, you know, being around the opposite sex, Girls usually lie way more, I think, than guys about their numbers because girls, I think, in girl groups, there's a lot more shame attached to being a whore. I think in girl guy groups, not so much. I think guy groups, until you get to a certain age, I think nowadays I've realized it now. A lot of my friends in my friend circle, 
there's not a lot of like cheering on if somebody decides to cheat on their partner if somebody ends up getting another person pregnant that isn't their wife or girlfriend if somebody is like you know always on the prowl you get a lot more shameful looks like people tell you to calm down like i've mentioned myself in this particular pod about my friend who i bumped into a couple of times in the shopping mall and stuff and he was you know i was talking to him recently and he was like you know like a flipping you know like a cocaine meerkat head always on a swivel every person that was passing by was looking at us like bro relax and it's like it's not even he i don't even know if he's got a wife or a girlfriend but just like bro at this age like you know what i mean your first thing after like have you not seen enough bums like have you not seen enough hit like breasts like is like uh, why are you so excited but some guys just don't have the ability to turn it off but in general I think girls lie way more to their friends about what they get up to, which is understandable, you know, understandable. But I think girls' numbers would probably, you know, shock a lot of their friends. Um, there's probably bodies that girls have that their friends have no idea about, do you know what I mean? Especially if it involves people that they've both kind of hooked up with. So um, it's difficult, it's difficult, it's difficult. And and personally for me, I think now we're in, we're in I, I think we're in a great place in society personally. As much as a prude and a pussy and a scaredy cat I am with a lot of things, I think it's really good that we're in a space in we're in a space we're in a time in history where people can live this type of lifestyle openly and proudly if they want to without being shamed for it and they can find other people who also like to live that lifestyle because I always thought it was unfair for you to get into a relationship with somebody and then spring on them that you want to be in a polyamorous relationship or I want to be in an open relationship because sometimes you'd imagine if that person loves you, like, it's weird to say this, weird to say it, but imagine this for a second. If that person really loves you, they would probably be willing to entertain it, even if though they don't want to really do it. Just because they love you and they don't want you to leave, they might entertain the idea of opening up the relationship just so you don't go. And I think that's really un unfair on the other person because they didn't get into that relationship wanting that. But we live in a time and place now where through parties, through websites, I assume, Instagram accounts, whatever, you can find people who are into that sort of stuff and you guys can do your thing, you know, without having to disturb and ruin somebody else's life who maybe just wants to, you know, wants a conventional nuclear family, white picket feds, dog, two kids, whatever. You know what I mean? Um, so more more power to the people out there who are smashing 100 people in one day. Um, she needs to tell a doctor, not social media. Jesus, Lord, the postal will tear this. You what? What in Jezebel's spirit is going on here? Another person. The issue is the amount of coverage this story keeps getting on social media. How many positive people have their stories? Oh, shut up. Positive people, man. Shut up. Who cares, bro? We don't live in positive times. Have you seen what's been going on? Did you not witness that fucking horrifying footage of people being burned alive in that hospital in Gaza? Hospital is basically a tent. Do you not see some of that footage of people writhing in pain as they're being legitimately barbecued from missiles from flipping Israel? Are you not like, do we don't live in a positive world, my friend? On either side, there is no such thing as a positive world. You want positive news? You know, start up your own positive news network, but that's not going to go well because the real world isn't positive. It's fucking bleak. It's dark. It's disgusting. It's horrifying. You know, <laughs> it's ran through. It is. It really is positive news. How many positive people have their stories ignored and important stories don't hear, people don't hear about it. Instead, each day is the same OF creators get posted. Oh, shut up. What a sad life, someone says here. Jesus, someone says here. I think it's so interesting how this demographic of women can do this and still get married with no judgment, but other races cannot. I'm not supporting it. I just find it interesting. What are you even, what, like, how does race come into this? Honestly, some people, some people's obsession with always throwing the race thing is wild i know i like to play with it sometimes as a car just to kind of banter but this tour of argument like what does race have to do with this honestly what does race have to do with this like what does it do with this <laughs> what <laughs> i'm not gonna lie but some of the videos i've seen or some of the the pictures of the feet of the guys that were you know signing up for this run ran through i think this girl's i think this girl's running the, you know she's the ceo of a united colors of benetton mate it's the UN in that house. I think it covers a whole smorgasbord of fucking, you know, races and backgrounds and ethnicities. She doesn't discriminate. This girl doesn't discriminate. Whatever her entry policy is, whatever her requirement policy is to sign up to be 100, I don't think one of the requirements is race. I don't think she discriminates. I think she allows anybody to kind of, you know, do what needs to be done. And, you know, 
whatever. If she ends up getting married and somebody doesn't care about what she did in the past, it's all good. Like, I, you know what I mean? It doesn't, I, it doesn't really bother me in a sight. I, I've never really understood that kind of thing anyway. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get this. Um, But I guess maybe it's like a consequence of this like alpha male um red pill manosphere world then it where guys are like secretly not, not not so secretly searching for like virgins everywhere like every everyone they want to get involved in has to be like pure it's like mm, I, I, I don't i don't know i don't know man i don't know i don't know you want a very attractive blonde white girl in her mid-20s to be a uh, okay cool cool man cool um whatever someone else says yeah they didn't even care about sleeping with guys that's not their pleasure their pleasure is doing things to get attention on the internet so people hopefully buy their of please oh 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 really really you think she might be an attention seeker really a content creator you think might be an attention seeker really ah oh, who would have guessed um another person here why is this even getting attention any promotion Imagine all the young girls following her new source, your new source, and thinking this is something to aspire to. That's why you have parents. That's why you have guardians. That's why you have family members to look after you. Pa parents, like what? What's she meant to do? If you're letting this girl raise your child, you've you've already lost. You've already lost. If you're letting social media and the internet raise your children, you've already lost. They're doomed already. And also, let's give these kids a bit of credit. I'm not sure about you guys, but I think these kids are a lot more savvy and intelligent than some of these older people like to kind of play out. They're not that dumb. Don't just see online. It's not just it's not like monkey see, monkey do type of thing. They might just watch it like what we're watching it, observe it like content like I'm doing now, be fascinated by it, and then continue scrolling. Doesn't mean because she sees this, it's going to be like, Dad, can I rent an Airbnb, please, for the weekend? I want to get ran through. Like, that's not going to happen. Like, come on, man. Reality, please. And if it does happen, you've lost anyway. It's their choice. What, what, what are you going to do? You're going to try and stop them. All right, cool. Let me know how that goes. Let me know how it goes. God almighty. What she does in her own time is no one's business. But you are actively making it something for young, impressionate followers think that they can need to do in order to make it. That's what's, that's what's, what's wrong about this. You know what's really funny? I really want this girl to do something really crazy and really break the internet. Here's what I want her to do. And her friend. I want these girls, uh, Bonnie and Lillian, to do this. They're going to get a lot of, because England is boring and, you know, we're puritanical and prudish and shit. So they're probably going to get pelters. They're probably going to get doxxed. You know, there's going to be, they're going to have a hell of a week because this is all, this is just starting. So they're going to they're be all over the place. Everyone's going to be like, chastising them. What are they? Image is sending bad for the children. You're ruining the youth. Ah. All right, cool. You know what I want to do? I want these girls to take whatever money they make However, they're making it, and I want them to go and um, what you call it to open up a soup kitchen. I want them to start handing out turkeys and shit. I want these girls to maybe open up a, I don't know, a, 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 a store where they're giving out free jackets and stuff, or maybe free phones, or maybe they're handing out vouchers for electricity for people that are maybe you know suffering and the cost of energy has gone up and they can't you know afford to keep the lights on then we'll see how people react to that <laughs> if they use the money they've been making from getting ran through by you know hundreds and thousands of dudes and they've been posting and popularizing and kind of promoting this very you know let's say um dangerous right dangerous lifestyle i want them to take the money from that and really really give these social justice warriors and you know virtue signalers something to worry about and to fucking get their brains all frazzled by giving that money away to charity or by doing really charitable things and giving back to the community in a really in a really kind of impactful way stuff that even the government isn't doing at the moment like hey we're handing out you know a thousand pounds per month for the next six months to 10 single mothers in in, in england who are strong at the moment like and film the videos of their reaction how they're helping like that sort of stuff that's what i want to see then it's going to give people something to think about then i want to see then i want to see what y'all people are gonna have to say okay that's what i want to see but anyway um big up these girls let's see how it plays out for them it's flipping madness i don't know what the hell's going on but i love the world and how it's playing out i love the world and how it's playing out switching to something more serious and going on about the in relation to the cover image of this particular podcast 